یکی از کوچ های بسیار معروفی هست که ما افتخار داریم امروز در خدمتشون باشیم و از دانسته هاش و از روش کوچینگش و از خدماتی که میتونه برای ریل استیت داشته باشه که ما رو from zero to hero هدایت بکنه اینجاست راب شاید بیش از دیویست سشن کوچینگ داشته و یه چیزی شاید نزدیک به شست هزار ایجنت رو کوچ کرده و جز کوچ های معروف و اینترنشنال کوچینگی هست که آفیس خودشو داره من با توضیحات بیشتر وقت شما رو نمیگیرم خود راب در اینجا هست و میتونه با صحبتاش و با هدایت هایی که داره معرف بیشتری برای خودش باشه امیدوارم که از وقت امروز استفاده کاملی بکنیم و بتونیم در خدمتون باشیم من با اجزتون از راب دعوت میکنم که در ادامه برنامه بیان و مراسم شنه ازدادن راب Usually when I'm being introduced, I can tell what to say and when I'm coming up, but that one startled me because <laughs> I have no idea what he was saying. I, I, did, I did get Zero to Hero out of that. Yeah. That was good. That was, that, that was the point. Yeah, Zero to Hero, Rob Vivian, coaching Zero to Hero. I got that. And so when he said Rob, I was a little startled because I have no idea what he was saying. So all the stuff he said, I agree. And so really happy to be here today and I, and I really mean that. I know when you have speakers out, they always start with, you know, we're so happy to be here, but you know, our, our company is, uh, is located here in the GTA. We're in Ajax, that's where we operate out of. We, we coach folks all over North America. Now, half our clients are here in the GTA because that's where we are. And so when we do things for lots of companies, it always has to be by webinars and things because we can't physically go there. But I get a chance to do a lot of talks here in the GTA. I was saying that we have, I have 52 talks in September in 20 days. So I did a breakfast meeting this morning. I get to talk to you, find folks now, and another one this afternoon and then this evening. So we do lots of talks in September. It's popular. Love it when we get to be in person versus doing webinars because you're just looking at your computer making a talk. The talk I want to actually do today is uh, how to guarantee your success. And I know that sounds like a kind of a bit of a bold statement when the real estate industry has such a huge failure rate. I mean, it has the highest failure rate of any industry that you can get into. It's so amazing when you do it correct, and if you're not doing it correct, it's so punishing. And so, according to the Toronto Real Estate Board, if you get a real estate license on, in Toronto, there's only a 20% chance you'll still have a license in two years, which means there's an 80% <coughs> failure rate in the first couple of years. That's the highest of any, any industry. So when I am saying that I'm gonna do a talk here on your success guarantee, that's a little bit of a bold statement to make. We're talking about an industry that has such a failure rate. And so in order to guarantee your success, there's several things that you have to do correct. And when you do them correct, you'll go from zero to hero. And so, the success guarantee, I'm talking today about your business. I'm not talking about your life. I'm really not saying today that if you follow these four little steps or principles I'm gonna give you today, you're gonna to have a successful life. I'm not actually saying that. I'm talking solely this morning about your business. I'm gonna show you how to have a very successful real estate business. You could be a disaster in the other equities of your life and maybe not have a great life. You'll just have lots of money. That's not really success. So today I'm really not talking about your, your life really. I'm talking about your real estate career. I don't want you to think that, because uh, I really know, don't know anybody here very well at all. And so I don't want you to think that I'm sending the impression that if you make lots of money, your life is a big success. I actually don't feel that way at all, actually. I have a book coming out in a couple of months that I would highly recommend you buy. And it's called The Grass is Greener on This Side of the Fence. And it's really about the fact that you should be grateful for what we have and thankful and be happy every morning when you wake up. So really, that's where life is. So today, success guaranteed, I'm only talking about your business, not so much your life. I will teach you today how to have a highly lucrative real estate business. 
it'll be up to you to make sure you look after the other equities of your life. However, I will say also that there is some credence to having a successful business, making the rest of your life somewhat easier. You guys agree that sometimes life's a full contact sport? You guys agree? Yeah. Is this the group that's not going to respond? <laughs> no matter what I say. You guys agree that sometimes life sends you knocks? Yes. yes. Yeah. And so, on a scale of one to ten, sometimes those knocks are are a ten, and you have to deal with them. Uh, sometimes they're a five or six or seven, so not a ten, but there's still some serious things. If you're having one of those knocks that's a five or six or seven, something kind of significant you have to deal with, not a ten. If you also have financial stress as well, it can make that six seem like a ten. Okay? So in some ways, if your real estate career is very lucrative, very productive, very profitable, even though that doesn't guarantee a successful life and all those other equities in place, still makes your life somewhat better that at least when you have the knocks of life come knocking, at least if it's a six, it's a six. If it's a five, it's a five. Because when you have financial stress, every issue in your life is a 10. Then it gets magnified. So today I'm only talking about your career and how to make it wildly successful in the Toronto real estate market. The success we have with realtors in this area is outstanding. We have a system that I'll share with you, some points that you have to get correct. Our 300 coaching clients that we have sold last year just under 15,000 homes. Imagine a real estate office with 300 agents selling 15,000. Any brokers in the room? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Imagine 300 agents selling 15,000 homes. That'd be insane. Well, that's what our clients did. So just under 50 per person is the class average. So a group of people that half 150 or so are in the greater Toronto area, 150 scattered around North America. And I'm not saying our, our top people sell 50. I'm saying that's the class average. 47, 48, 49. And so the principles that we teach them, I'm going to teach to you today, as many as I can. There really is four things that a realtor has to get their head around in order to do that type of production. The Toronto Real Estate Board, of all the boards, is the easiest of all the boards to make a lot of money. It's probably also the board that commissions are under fire the most. We coach some people in Virginia and they charge 7% there, and their market's high. 4% to the listing broker, that'd be awesome when you're a broker, and 3% to the selling broker. And the client called me the other day and said, I went on this listing appointment and this idiot said he only wanted to pay six. How do I even handle that? You should come work in Toronto for a bit. And so although it's the, it's, Toronto is the market that commissions are under fire the most than any of the other boards, it's also one of the most lucrative boards in North America. Toronto Real Estate Board sells around 100,000 homes annually. That means if you make a sale, you have a listing and I sell it, we each make a sale. That means the Toronto Real Estate Board pumps out 200,000 sites annually. That's, what, that's the most lucrative board on the planet, quite frankly. So even though commissions on the listing side are a little under fire, uh, the reality is, this is the easiest place to make money. So our, our 150 coaching clients that are in the GTA, they averaged last year 53 sales. And then the other 150 averaged 40. So the Toronto people outproduce them. And let's face it, our prices are pretty high. So even though you might have to take a little bit less on the listing sometimes, uh, we make a great commission on the selling side. I'm telling you guys the truth, yes. Sometimes you go to seminars and you hear the speaker say, never cut commission. You go, well, you don't sell in Toronto. Am I telling the truth, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, okay, so let's be real with each other. And so still, the average commission in Toronto, if you average model, is probably $10,000. You sell 20, 30, 40, that's three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, quite easily to make, actually. And so in order to do that, there's, there's four things when we get a coaching client that we make them understand in the first month of their coaching. Because they don't get these four things correct, they probably won't be able to do what they could do. And the first point is a mindset point. And it's about understanding how things work and understanding your thinking, how that affects the outcome. 
And so the first point is really your mindset, how to be wired correctly for success. I think in some ways we come somewhat pre-wired or we get a real estate license and we get influenced by what other realtors around us say. And so we get this wiring. So I'm needing to tell you first that if your thinking is not correct, it would be pretty much impossible to have a vibrant career. We work really hard with our coaching clients to get their thinking correct. I'm sure you've heard before that you become what we think about, yes? Have you guys heard that? <laughs> can everybody just say yes, please? Yes. I just want to make sure you can talk. Okay? <laughs> or maybe English. And so, if a person is thinking correctly, if, they're, if, they're, if their brain is wired for success, it's very difficult to fail. Unfortunately, every coin has two sides. If your thinking is not correct, and you're not wired correctly for success, it's almost impossible to succeed. It doesn't matter how hard you try. It's almost like if you can visualize a magnetic pole, and you stick it into a bucket of iron shavings, metal shavings. If the pole is the right way, all the shavings would go to that metal pole. You guys understand that? No. If you flip that pole around and push it in where it's the magnet's the wrong way, all the metal shavings would push away. And so if your thinking is not correct, it's pretty much impossible to succeed. If you could be thinking incorrectly and succeed, you'd be the very first person on the planet to beat. You become what you think about. And nobody beats that. It's the most the highest, most superior of all the principles on that it's a very fine line between that thinking correctly and that not thinking correctly. If you're a business person, you probably know what you're supposed to think about, or you know what you should think about. But unfortunately, the principle is you become what you think about, not you become what you should think about, or you become what you're supposed to think about, or you become what you want to think about. You become what you do think about. It's as simple as that. How we spin things in our mind, our perspective on things, will dictate the direction that things go. How we spin things will dictate when you put that metal pole into that bucket of shavings. Does everything rush to it? Or does everything get pushed away from it? How we spin things. Do you guys remember 10 years ago when everybody was very down on Lance Armstrong for winning all those races on drugs? Do you guys remember that? Yeah. yeah. So when I heard that, I, I was thinking the other way. I was kind of impressed, because I remember in my younger days, when I used to do drugs, I couldn't even find my bike. Guess what I'm, <laughs> Like, where is that bike? You guess what I'm talking about? Some of you are looking at me like, oh, that was different drugs, Rob. I know I'm making a joke. It's okay to laugh. The, uh, I was doing a, a seminar in Calgary um, about a couple months ago, I guess. And I don't know if you know this or not, but in Calgary, they dress like cowboys. So they came to this uh, event, several thousand of them, dressed up like cowboys. It's very odd to be standing on the stage in your suit with everybody wearing what I call a Timmins dinner shirt, you know, the yeah. red check thing going on, big buckle about this big tight jeans boots hat. And I'm talking to them all. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, everywhere else in the country, that's a Halloween costume right there. That's what that is. You know, you go to Halloween as a cowboy, right? And I'm the only guy in the suit. But the perspective is for them that that's reality. That's normal for them. You guys got that? So different things for different people. We've got to make sure that our perspective of things is that we're, we're spinning things correctly. I don't know how much you know about how the brain works, but I'm going to give it to you in a very rudimentary way to help you understand how you can rewire yourself if you're not wired correctly. Now seeing as 80% of the realtors that get a license fail, I have to assume that any room that I'm talking to, most of the people are not wired correctly. And those 20% that make it, very few realtors sell a lot of homes. Matter of fact, the vast majority of realtors on the Toronto Real Estate Board sell between four and seven. That's the biggest group of realtors, between four and seven transactions, which is probably the biggest group in this room right now. Four to seven sales a year. I call that production the trap. It's just enough where you don't want to go get a real job. You know, you sell seven and make $55,000. And then you think, well, I could probably get a job for $55,000, but I'd have to go there every day for eight hours. You guys understand what I'm talking about? 
So it's just enough that we stay here in this job. But I'm pretty sure you didn't do phase one, phase two, phase three to get into real estate to sell five homes, seven homes, and make $50,000, $60,000 when annually there's 200 thousand sites available. I would think with a good plan, any realtor could find 30, 40, 50 sales, which isn't really as much work as you might think it is, and really have that awesome career that you want to have. Starting with being wired correctly. Now, if you look at the, sub, the, the brain like this, your brain is broken into two pieces, the conscious and the subconscious. Are there any neurologists in the room? It's a bit of a long shot, I get that. No, no neurologists here? No. I guess neurologists don't become realtors, do they? No. I would think so. Yeah. And so just so you know, I'm not a neurologist, but I spend most of my uh, reading, I read a couple of books a month, and I spend most of my reading on human behavior, psychology, how the brain works, to understand people. If you're in a people business, you should understand why people do what they do, so you can help them. And so the conscious mind is where you make all of the decisions. You decided to come here today, you decided to be a realtor, you decided to dress the way you dress today. The conscious mind makes all of the decisions. It's the captain, really. The subconscious mind does not have the ability to reason. It's just an order taker. It's the thing that makes everything happen, but it just takes orders. So if you're in the real estate industry, and then you start saying to yourself, well, nobody will pay the commission. If that's what the conscious mind is telling the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind doesn't have the ability to reason. It doesn't say back, yeah, I'm not sure that belief system is going to work well for us. It doesn't do that. If you look at it like this, on a big ship, the captain's on the bridge giving the orders, yes? Yeah. And so the captain uh, radios down to the engine room. Um, Full speed ahead, 12 degrees to the starboard. The engine room never questions the captain, ever. The engine room just full steam ahead, 12 degrees to the starboard. Now maybe the captain is somewhat suicidal. Maybe he wants to go out and take everybody with him. So he sees a reef or an island off to the right. And he says to the engine room, full speed ahead, 12 degrees to the starboard. You know what the engine room does? Full speed ahead, 12 degrees to the starboard. The engine room never questions the captain, ever. Doesn't say, you know, I'm not sure that's a good idea. The captain gives orders and the engine room makes it happen. And so in your brain, that's exactly the way it is. Your conscious mind is the captain. It's making all the decisions, but the captain is not what makes it happen. The captain gives orders to the engine room of your mind, and the engine room makes it happen. If you study out the brain, it's absolutely astounding how much power every person's brain has. I mean, you become what you think about. I was reading the other day that they put three glasses of water on a table, and they wrote different words on masking tape on each of the glasses. They wrote the word love, hate, I can't remember the other word, some other word. And then they just asked people to stare at the glass for two minutes and focus on that word. Now, you wouldn't think in any way that that could change anything. Then they checked that it had changed the molecular structure of the water. Just by looking at that water and thinking about that word. And so that's how powerful the human brain is. Far more powerful than people realize. The engine room of your brain has the ability to take you to 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 deals. We coach the number one agent on the board. Uh, we coach in the top 100 people on Trev. 45 of them are our clients. We teach them the plan. I'm going to show you that today, too. This is not the first point. But first things first, we have to get their captain speaking correctly to the engine room. So a good instruction, for example, who in this room would be happy with 30 sales annually easily? Who would be happy with that? 30 sales annually easily. That's not putting your hand up. I know it's a lot of effort to actually do that. Does anybody here sell more than 30 already? Well, then you all should have put your hand up there, okay? So, if the captain said to the engine room, I sell 30 homes annually with ease. I sell 30 homes annually with ease. Guess what the engine room would do? Would make 30 sales happen annually with ease. 
You guys have heard the term affirmations before, right? Yes. You go to seminars and they say, you say your affirmations. You go, okay. And then you leave not really understanding why, what to say, when to say them. So I'm explaining to you, affirmations are just affirming something. Whatever you affirm, whatever the captain says, the engine room never questions the captain. The subconscious mind just makes that thing happen. I did an exercise. Um, was anybody at the event I did in July? Anybody at that event? No? She comes to my events, you know. And so we had about 800 people there. And I said to the group, would you like me to tell your future? And they said, can you do that? Oh, yeah. And so in the workbook that they got, I had six words written down. Three of them positive, three of them negative. So positive like health, wealth, you know, happiness. And then the negative words, death, worry, stress. And I said, okay, so circle the best three words to think about. And they all circled the three positive. I should see them all doing it on the left side. And I said, so if you're wondering what's coming into your life in the next 18 months, put a check mark beside the three words you've been thinking about the most. Unfortunately, a lot of people were checking things off on the right. I've really been worried about death. I've been thinking about stress. I've been worried about this, worried about that. So whatever you are thinking about right now, whatever orders the captain's given the engine room, those things are coming into your life in 18 months. It's as simple as that. Really, your future, your when your career and your spiritual position and your relationships and your physical condition is just an echo of what you're currently thinking right now. Which means everything you have right now today is a photocopy of your thinking from 18 months ago. And so I said to the group, it's not the circles that are coming into your life in the next 18 months, it's the check marks. They will hunt you down and overtake you for certain. If they don't, you'd be the first person to beat you become what you think about, which you're not going to be. You guys clear on this? Yeah. yeah. So the first piece of the puzzle is you really need to have your thinking correct. And it's so insanely easy. You just say things, just the captain gives good instructions to the engine room. The subconscious mind is so powerful, you have no idea how powerful it is. And then whatever you say, you tell the engine room, it immediately starts working on making that thing happen. So you tell the engine room, I sell 30 homes annually easily. It's easy. It'll start architecting energy for you, architecting focus for you, architecting structure, architecting phone calls to you, architecting everything. It'll start putting things in place to make that thing that the captain said happen. Because the engine room never questions the captain. It just makes it happen. First piece of the puzzle is you have to be thinking correctly. You have to be wired correctly. You can't be going, oh, I'd love to sell 30 homes, but you know what, it's so tough in this market. It's so tough with there's so many realtors now. There's over 41,000 realtors and nobody wants to pay. You can't have the captain talking like that to the engine room and expecting to wake up on a work day bright out of bush tail so, with so much energy and focus to get out there. Of course, if you start giving the engine room the proper instructions, that fits in instantly. You guys clear on this? Okay, that's the first point. The second point is you have to have a plan, which is the easier of the four points. This one is insanely easy, this next point. Just you have to have a plan. But I can give you the plan in like, I don't know, five minutes. It's not complicated at all, actually. If your thinking is not correct, if the captain continues to give the engine room bad information, the plan is not going to help. You guys know what it's like to run in water up to your waist? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, at my cottage on a hot summer day, which were very few this year, playing beach volleyball, we put the net in the water. That's the most fun thing on a hot summer day of anything. But sometimes the ball is right there and you just can't get it. So as I tell you the plan, and if you don't get your thinking correct, the first point, you'll be working the plan, but you'll be running in water through your career. So you can tough it out, and you can work at it, but you're running in water. You guys got that? So if you can get your thinking correct, you get all the water onto the shore, and then you can be like a rocket. So you can still implement the things I'm going to tell you on the plan with a bad mindset. It's you're just running in water. I don't know why you'd want to do that. And so have you all heard before that real estate's a numbers game? Hey, that sounded southern, didn't it? Y'all? Y'all? I did speak in the South recently. I wonder if I caught it. Remember, I picked that up. You all have heard that real estate's a numbers game, yes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
And so what people don't really realize, it's an absolute number. It's not just kind of a number. So what's the numbers game? I don't know. The more people you talk to, the better your chance to get a deal. Yeah, but it's way more refined than that. There's an actual formula. Once you know it, then you can play the game. And the numbers game of real estate is one in four leads works out. That's the numbers game. So if somebody wants to sell 30 homes, all you need is a plan to find 120 leads in a year. That's not a lot of leads. I'm not talking about qualified listing points. I'm talking about just finding 120 leads in a year and let 90 not work out and let 30 work out. It's a mathematical absolute. As a matter of fact, if you can find a way to find 120 leads in a year, you can take the public's misbehavior out of your success equation. How amazing would that be? Yeah? yeah? Does the public misbehave a lot? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Not what they do. Yeah. yeah, so what most realtors do is this, is they don't have a system to find 120 leads, which I'll give you in a second. This is the plan part. And so their system right now maybe generates, I don't know, 30 leads. And they're trying to convert them all. Well, 30 leads is going to be seven deals to trap every year. And so what happens is then we have 30 leads, we're trying to make them all work, which can't work ever for anybody. I'm pretty good at this business. Okay, so when I get a lead, guess what are the odds it'll work out for me? Somebody say one in four. Somebody say that. One in four. Thank you. And so it's the same for everybody. So when you find 30 leads, trying to make them all work, we end up getting mad at everybody. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like you get this email that goes like this. Oh, um, listen, we really appreciate all your hard work. You know when the email starts like that? It's gonna end bad, right? And so that happens, and then we get mad because we found 30 leads trying to do 20, 30 deals, and it's only gonna be seven, so we get mad at everybody. And then because we get mad at everybody, realtors make up sayings, like buyers are buyers. That's what we say. That's what we say. Well, that's the way, it's the way it is. And then someone promises us a listing. You know, everyone knows when they say, we're going with you for sure. That's like the kiss of death, isn't it? <laughs> you know, that's pretty great. Because every time they say, we're going with you for sure. Okay, great, because usually they don't. Then when they list with someone else, then we say buyers are liars and sellers are liars too. Yeah. You guys got that? And so if we could just have a system for finding those 120 leads, we could get out of that whole mindset. You guys got that? Just let 90 not work out and let 30 work out, as simple as that, okay? Now, without knowing that, I don't know how you currently right now set goals. Like you meet with your broker or manager, and you say, well, how many deals do you want to sell this year? I don't know, 20. Okay, well, until right now that you know it'll take 80 leads, I don't know how you would work on 20. Like, what would you do? What's your plan? At least now you can say, all right, so, in, I don't know, we have 90 days left, maybe sell four, five, eight more homes. And then next year, you say, okay, I want to sell 25 homes. I will require 100 leads. At least once you know that, you can begin to set a plan. Without knowing that, I don't know what your infrastructure would be. And so, how you find all those leads is really quite easy. There's a saying that goes like this, you should never have all your eggs in one basket. You guys all heard that? Yes. Yeah. Realtors are notorious for this mistake. Literally notorious. When I talk to realtors, they say to me, I meet them for the first time on breaks and things, and I ask them about their business. They tell me about the thing they do. The one thing they do. Like, oh, I'm a farmer. Not like with a hoe, you know, like geographical. Or I work for sale owners, or I work expired listings, or I work my database, or I work open houses. They have one thing they do, and that thing over time becomes their identity. People recognize them as that activity, which means they have that their career all the eggs in one basket. So the formula, the plan for finding 100 leads is as simple as having three sources. And so in our program, it's quite simple what we do with realtors, is we get a client, so we first have to get them out of the water. You guys understand that, right? We gotta talk to them about how they're thinking, because they're, right now, they're, they're, the life they have is a reality of from their thinking in the past, so let's architect something better in the future going to require 100 leads. So there are six major pillars. Working your past client center of influence, calling around active listings and sold, doing open houses, uh, having a geographical farm, uh, expires and visibles. There's six major pillars. 
we and our company have written a little plan, like six points, that's how you work that, that's how you work that one. And so all we would do with realtors is help them select the three that best suit them. What's your personality? If you're sort of uh, relationship driven, you might want to focus on geographical farming and open house. If you're kind of a lone wolf, attack physicals and expires. Whatever suits you. For me, I haven't really sold at any volume since the year 2000. So that's a long time ago. It doesn't seem like it, but it is that long ago. And so, but from 1990 to 2000, I sold over 100 homes a year for a decade, working my past client center of influence at a geographical farm and for sale by owners. Those are my three, we call them pillars. And so any realtor in this room that takes a look at those main six things and just ask yourself, okay, which ones suit me? Choose three, okay? And if you worked your three pillars every week, I think you could, would agree that you could find a lead every other week, that wouldn't be a lot. If you're working for sale by owners and you only get a lead every other week, that would not be a lot. But that'd be 25, 30 in a year for that pillar. And if each of the pillars does that, that would be 90 leads. There'll always be some other leads, some sign calls, internet calls, and so on. Another 10 or 15 or 20. So any realtor that doesn't have all the rigs in one basket has three sources, we call them pillars, can easily generate 100, 120 leads. As a matter of fact, with our coaching clients, uh, our mantra in our company is find a new client daily. Find a new client daily, get a lead every day. So we're not a workaholic company. We teach eight weeks vacation a year. That's pretty good, isn't it? No. Eight weeks? Yeah. And so we just want our clients to work about 200 days a year. That's it. But on those 200 days, we want them to get to work and find a lead. And so really, that's all that's happening in our coaching program. We've got them out of the water in their mindset, telling their mind, telling the engine room the right things. We, we tell them, if you want to do 50, which is more or less the class average, you need to find 200 leads. Your pillars will give them to you fairly easily if you get at them. You just have to find a lead and a pillar every week, which means if you're working for sale by owners, all that has to happen is this. You call someone Monday. They're all crazy. Are they crazy sometimes? Of course they are. They say, this, they say the craziest things. So you talk to someone Monday, no, not interested in any of them. Talk to someone Tuesday, not interested in any of them. Talk to, so again on Wednesday, oh, one I think is, has potential. Thursday, no. Friday, no. I mean, four out of five days, you weren't interested in any of them. Maybe talk to 15, 20 physicals, you weren't interested in one, you guys got that? But that one a week, 45 weeks, that's 45 leads. That means that pillar, done correctly, will be 10, 12 deals. All you need is three pillars, kicking in 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12. It's quite simple, actually. So the plan is the easiest of the four things you need to do to be successful for sure, okay? The third piece is the hardest piece, okay? It's followed by the easiest piece. So that plan, simple. We can, matter of fact, when we work with folks in, as a coaching client, it only takes us about a month to get them up and running in the plan. It doesn't take long at all, actually. You don't need coaching to find out what to do. I'm telling you today what to do. The, the magic piece of coaching is the accountability then to do it. You understand realtors need accountability, yes? Absolutely. That's the biggest response yet. Yeah. That's good. And so it only takes us a month to teach them how to do it. And then every week on their coaching calls, we hold them accountable to find those 120 or 80 or 100 or 200 leads. And the deals are a mathematical absolute. And you know what's really interesting? It doesn't even matter how long you've been licensed. Is anybody new here in the first year? What's your name? Barzan? Yeah. Okay. And so you're less than a year, right? So your, your ratio will be one in four. And I can tell you that the story that you'll hear on the three to four that don't work out will be you're too new, you're too inexperienced, you haven't sold homes in this price range before, you haven't sold homes in this area before, you haven't sold enough homes. That'll be the flavor of the three to four that don't work out for you, okay? Uh, my son, Josh, kind of runs my business, I just do this. But if I went out selling, it would still be one in four, except I would hear this. Uh, you're already successful, uh, you already got lots of money, um, you're really busy, you want to give someone else a chance. Because see, in human behavior, there's this underlying personality trait that 50% of the people on the planet have, and I have it. And that is you want to give the new person a chance. Half the population wants to use you because you're new. So as your career transpires through the next 20, 30 years, the one in four won't change, just the story will change. But the one in four is the same. So our newer coaching clients, we track everybody's number 
numbers a lot. Our brand new clients, pretty much one in four. We have a, a client that got her license in 1959. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, she works for Royal Page downtown. 1959, she got a real estate license. And Kit's numbers are one in four. She sent me her 20 year plan the other day, which was odd, when she's 75. I looked at the back to see what the last page said. She was still planning on being alive. And so the, the third piece of the puzzle, and the most difficult, is you have to get over things quickly, which is very difficult for realtors. And so I'm telling you in, in advance that three out of four deals do not work out. That's the way it is. Okay, so you can't live and die with, uh, if you're gonna do 80 de uh, 20 deals, you need 80 and 60 don't work out, you can't live and die with those 60. You guys got that? When things don't go your way, you've got to let them go. So if you're in this room, you say, you know what, Rob, I'd be ecstatic with 20 deals, probably make a couple hundred thousand dollars. Well, 60 won't work out. You will make the call probably on 45 of them. There'll be 10 that you really wanted, but they chose someone else. And then there'll be five, what I would call, you gotta be kidding me moments. You guys understand what you want to know? You know what you gotta be kidding me moment is? Yeah. So when they do something absolutely right, you go, you have got to be kidding me. Like you go to a social, and because you're there, everybody's talking real estate, right? So you go to this social and you meet someone, they go, oh hey, how's it going? It's a role play. Yeah. Yeah, we just bought a condo. And you're like, you're like, wow, that's great. You're, yeah. And we used MLS. What do you think? It's some big pot? Put all the money and we split it at the end of the year? You're saying, oh wow, that's Great. You're thinking, what the heck? Yes. Correct? Like what? Yes? yes? So you can't be living and dying with the ones that don't work out. You guys got that? One in four works out. Find the 80, do 20 deals, let the 60 fall by the wayside, and move along. We've got to get over things quickly. This this real estate business is somewhat of a full contact sport. Okay? It's not possible. Someone said to you the other day, how do I not have any of those? You gotta be kidding me moments. Oh, very easy. Don't, don't find any clients. What you want is more of that. See, the more deals you do, the more of everything you have. You guys got that? So what, if you do 20 deals and you have five you gotta be kidding me moments, what you really want the next year is, is eight you gotta be kidding me moments. That means you jumped up to 25. If you do 50 deals, there's like 20. You gotta be kidding me moments. It's like I was helping Josh, my son, last year. We were, uh, I was teaching him how to do the business. And so we had some buyers, and then Josh said, yeah, they decided they're gonna just not buy right now. I said, okay. Well, really, they're misbehaving. So we were showing a property, and we were walking up the driveway, and they were walking out of the house with another agent. And we passed in the driveway. <laughs> You've gotta be kidding me. Now that was not awkward for me, because I just scared them down. Very awkward for them, oh my gosh. But that's the way it goes sometimes, yes? So you have to get over things. Now. When you go on a listing appointment and they choose someone else, I'm gonna highly recommend you never check that listing again ever. So what realtors do is you, you're going on a listing appointment, you tell your colleagues, yeah, I've got this listing appointment, this nice house tonight. And then of course you go there and you don't always get it. I don't always get it, nobody always gets it. And so your friends in the office say, how'd you make out on that listing? And you say, oh, this other agent took it because they listed it you know, at 1.4 instead of 1.2. And so now they list with somebody else, yes? Yeah. I'm gonna highly recommend you just say to yourself, okay, they went to the 60, I wanted them to be the 20, it's over. See, what realtors do is because you just can't get over things. So two weeks later, you're on doing a CMA, you slide over to their address to check it. Yeah? And then there it is, 1.4, yeah, I knew it wouldn't sell. And then two weeks later, you're doing a CMA, you slide over again. Oh, now they reduce to 1.2, oh. Now you're mad again. You tell all your friends, now it's at my price, right? Two weeks later, you're on MLS, just slide over again. So oh. So and then when it closes, you're mad again. <laughs> Guys and gals, that's insane. That is insane behavior. So I say to all of our clients, you want a listing appointment and they don't choose you, it's over. Yeah. So they say, we're going with this person. So is that final? Yep. So who are you going with? This person. You know what? That's an awesome agent. I hope you guys sell the home for a lot of money. And I hope you guys are happy, so thanks for the opportunity, that's awesome. Never think about them as long as you live again, ever. The fact that it's your sister, that's very awkward. That happens sometimes. You know, see them at family functions. What I'm sharing with you today is liberating. You can't live and die with the 60. You gotta get over things, you guys got that? 
when things happen, get over it, move along, it's done. You already know that one or four are gonna work out and three or four do not work out. When things happen, not if, when, get over it, move along, end of the story. You guys clear on this? This is a bit of a long shot here, but does anybody here come from a farm other than me? So I'm the only person that was raised on a farm. Okay. And so on a farm, you guys know what farms are, right? <laughs> so my dad's still a dairy farmer, a dairy farmer. He has the black and white, the whole species. And so what happens on the farm is periodically the, the cow leans on the fence and it, it goes over because they weigh several thousand pounds. And cows, they don't run away, okay? They don't like, they're not like dogs or cats, you know? It's not like if the cows get out, the farmer has to say to the other farmer, listen, I lost a couple of cows. They're like 2,000 pounds, black and white. Have you seen anything like that running around? It's not what happens. They don't keep running. What cows do is they lean on the fence and it goes over. They go, oh, wow. And so they walk out and they stop and they walk to the road and stop there. You ever drive in the country, periodically you'll see the cows are on the road, but they don't keep going. They stop there. You guys got that? And then there's like, I guess they see each other, okay, just blend in, we'll see how long we can pull this one off. And then when the farmer notices the cows there, he doesn't panic because I don't think anyone's gonna run into them, for starters, and they don't keep running. As a matter of fact, the farmer just goes over and says, hey, let's go back in here. They go, okay, you got me. Let's go back in. It's as simple as that, quite frankly. It's quite organized. That's the way it works. And then the farmer fixes the fence and moves along with farming, yes? You guys got that? Yeah. And so, because that's the way it is, if the cows got out and the farmer put them back in and then prepared because the cows got out, that'd be a little bit of an overreaction, wouldn't you agree? Yes. So when things happen in your business, I'd like you just to say this, the cows broke. Do you guys ever screw up? Say things you shouldn't have said and so on? Don't live with it, let it go. I went on a listing appointment one time and when I went in, it was the two uh, stupidest things I ever said, and I said them back to back. So, you ever see a lady that is so pregnant that her belly button then pops out? You know what I mean? Like, it hits the end of a pop, you know what I mean? Just really big. So I go on this listing, and uh, I, I see her there, and I go, wow, so when are you due? And she said, what? <laughs> hey, that's not good when that happens. By the way, ladies in here, you think guys don't learn things, right? Trust me. We learn that quick. I don't care from that day to now, I don't care how pregnant you look. I am not saying anything. <laughs> I will never say that again. I don't care how pregnant you look. Then I'll just look, pretend you're not pregnant. And then the lady will say, you know I'm pregnant. Oh really? I didn't notice. I, <laughs> oh, I see it now. From the back you look just the same in the front. It's a sign that I see that now. Like I am so far away from saying that ever again. So, okay. So that didn't go well. So then I go, I said to the husband, let's go look at the house. So we go into the next room and sitting on the, on the couch is his daughter, maybe 15, you know, not the sharpest looking girl, really heavy. And I said, uh, is that your daughter? And he goes, that's my son. Oh boy. <laughs> I've only been in this place for like three minutes. Wow. And I say those two things. You know? And so, but then I said, okay, I'm gonna go, well, let me see the house the way I want the buyer. I just had to get away from them, obviously. Let me see the house the way the buyers see it. Let me go look. So I go upstairs and I'm, you know what I'm saying to myself? Hey, the cows are out. Cows are out, cows are my affirmation. Cows are out, cows are out, cows are out. I'm thinking, I'm gonna go back to the kitchen, they're probably gonna kill me. So, do you guys ever make mistakes like that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So don't live with it. Have you actually made a mistake before on a contract or something which cost some people some money? You end up paying work and did it. When things happen, when the cows get out, let it go, you guys got that? The third point is you, you must let things go. You've got to get over things. We cannot hold on to things. In life in general, it's just not good. But in real estate, the way our market is, if you don't let things go, you're going to be living in the water. You guys know what I'm talking about? Your mindset's going to be all screwed up. So when things happen, let things go. That's the harder of the four points. And then the last point, the fourth point, is you have to have a I will never give up attitude. I was doing a seminar, I mentioned, I may have mentioned to you guys, I had 52 of these talks in 20 days. September's busy for us. And so I heard this yesterday at one of the talks, yesterday afternoon. A young lady came up to me and said this, uh, I'm a brand new realtor, I'm gonna try it for a year, and then I'm gonna go back to nursing if it doesn't work out. So 
I said, can I, can I give you a tip? She goes, yeah, please, go back to nursing now and save yourself all the personal pain and anguish because you cannot win with that type of mindset. That is the wrong instruction for the captain to be sending to the engine room. You guys got that? You know what the engine will make happen? <coughs> nursing. It'll make nursing happen. You guys got that? I said, you, then I called her later. I said, give me your car. So last night I was 9.30. I'm talking to her for like 45 minutes. And I wanted just to rock her first and then explain it later. So I'm having this conversation with her last night that you gotta be thinking differently. You cannot win with that. You need a much more of a, I will never give up attitude. So I said, here, say this. I'm in the real estate business. I sell 30 homes easily. The same thing I did for you guys to say. And so just say that from now on. The engine room will make that happen. Now, I'm gonna share with you a bunch of people who you'll know them, all of them. And these people had what I would call a never give up attitude. You guys got that? And you will know all of these people. Sometimes when we hear about these people, we think they must have been so blessed to have the gifts that they had. This guy that I'm gonna share with you first, he was fired from his newspaper job. And the reason for his firing was he has no imagination and no personal ideas of his own. No create, no creativity. You don't have enough creativity and imagination to write an article. That man is Walt Disney. Can you imagine Walt Disney being told you have no imagination, no creative ideas? It's a good thing he didn't listen to them. There was a gal who was a news anchor. You know, when you're in news, anchor is the pinnacle of the job, right? And so this gal is a news anchor. And they said to her, here's the thing. If you're not fired, you're just gonna have to get devoted because you don't really play well on TV. You don't, you don't come across very well on television. So this gal hits her pinnacle and then gets devoted because, yeah, anchor is not your deal. That's Oprah Winfrey. Can you imagine telling Oprah that? This guy here, on his high school basketball team. His coach said, listen, you're an excellent athlete, no question about that, or track in basketball, but you don't have the coordination and skill for basketball. That's Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player ever. Now the reality is, the coach probably gave him correct information. Probably at that point in his life, that was correct information. But Michael Jordan was not accepting that he was not gonna be the greatest basketball player ever. So from that point forward, the captain gave the engine room a lot of good instructions. You guys got that? This band sent a demo tape to Duca Records. And Duca Records handled all of the big bands. And they said to this band, yeah, here's the thing. Your sound's not good. Okay? So musically, not so much. You guys should figure out what else to do. That's the Beatles. Apparently their sound was pretty good. You guys got that? Check this last one out. This guy wrote a children's book. And 23 editors turned it down. Can you imagine being turned down 23 times? I have a book coming out at the end of this year called The Grass is Greener on This Side of the Fence. Just a lighter side of you should be happy where you are, right? It's the kind of opposite talk that I'm doing today, quite frankly. I have 25 different talks. I'm just talking about your business today. But I made, made sure I made the point with you guys earlier at the beginning. I don't want you to think that having a huge real estate career makes you a successful person. It just, I'm just talking in this talk about your real estate career. So can you imagine writing a book and sending it to an editor and they say, no, it's not a good book. Would you give up then? No. Would you send it again? And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. 23 editors turned it down in a row. Don't you think most people would give up? The 24th person picked it up, that's Dr. Zeus. And that cat in the hat, the 24th one that picked it up, sold six million copies in the first year. Those people, if you Google these types of stories, hundreds of them, the truth of the matter is, very few people in life are a rocket, very few. Most people that become successful did not become successful initially. They have to kick around a bit, maybe you're in this room, maybe you've been selling for three years, until today I didn't know about one of four working out. Yeah, having three pillars, that'll give me all of them. I gotta think correctly. And you implement those things, and then all of a sudden 30, 40, 50, 60 deals for the rest of your career. It can be as simple as that. You know, Colonel Sanders, Kentucky Fried Chicken, he opened the first one when he was 65. 65 years old when he opened his first chicken place. I don't know what he was up to before that. Doing other things, probably like failed at a whole bunch of things first. Okay, the four things uh, from to guarantee success in your business would be you have to be thinking correctly. And it's as simple as having the conscious mind, 
your subconscious mind is always listening and it does not understand a joke. If you're a little jokey with yourself, like, oh yeah, I always screw that up. Oh yeah, I'm never quite like that. And you're just joking around. The subconscious mind does not understand a joke. It doesn't reason, it just takes instructions and makes it happen. Whatever the captain tells it, it makes that thing happen. One way or another, what the captain tells the engine room, the engine room does, one way or another. Whatever you're thinking, that's what's gonna happen. I would think in most audiences, all audiences, this room, the vast majority of you need a, a checkup from the neck up, quite frankly. And so, you need to improve your thinking. Then you have to have a plan, that's the simpler of it. Figure how many deals you wanna do, then you know how many leads you need, and then get three pillars, they'll give you all the leads. That part's simple. Get over things quickly, that's the hardest one. And then have this, develop this attitude of never give up. Now, the fourth one, the reason I left it to the end, it's a little bit of a byproduct of the first point. The stronger your mindset, the easier it will be to let things go. So just in my closing here, I'll, I'll just say this to you. Is, this is a bit of a long shot. Is anybody here an arborist? That's a long shot. Do you know what an arborist is? Trees, yes. So sometimes in landscaping, they only want the tree to be small. So when the tree's small, they put a metal band around the tree. And the tree grows to that band, and then it stops. It might grow a little bit around the band, but that tree is supposed to be this big, and they put the band this big, it stays this big. So they do that on purpose for whatever landscape they're doing, they keep that tree small. And so a lot of realtors, most, have kind of inadvertently put a band on yourself, okay? And so what you really need to do is just clip that band off and think a little bit bigger. You know, one of the things about life, when we're older, older people regret what they did not do, not what they did do. Do we do things we shouldn't do sometimes? Well, we're realtors, that's an obvious yes, okay? So when you're older, I guarantee you something, you'll regret what you did not do, not what you did do. That's not how it works. So right now, seeing as you're in the real estate industry and Toronto is insanely lucrative, implement the things that we talked about today and do better. Have a better business. Do 30, 40, 50 deals easily. Now, I don't want to be over dramatic, but the truth is that would be life changing for a lot of people. Starting to make three, four, five hundred thousand dollars every year for the next 15, 20 years, that would be life changing for a lot of people. And so easy to do just can't happen if the if the captain is sending the wrong instructions to the engine room. Thank you for your kind attention. Are you going to ask a question or something? Yes. Can we tell them about our coaching programs? Yes, please. Okay, so let me tell you guys about our programs. To which, we have a goal that 100 people would join coaching. You guys can solve my problem right today. Uh, we have actually four coaching programs. Uh, four programs. We have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program, which is uh, $699 a month, and you, well, we basically help you with everything we talked about today. The, uh, our second program is called Mastermind Coaching. It's $299 a month. It, uh, it's the same thing exactly, except there's four people on a call with the coach. And it's not that our lower producing people are in that and our higher producing are in one-on-one. -on -one. If you're the type of social person that likes to have other people on the call, the synergy, it's $99 a month, that's it. You have to have 20 people and it's one year. I basically come to your office at a scheduled time once a month. If it's like the first Wednesday of the month, it's the first Wednesday of the month. And I walk everybody through one year of accountability and uh, get everyone to where they need to get you. And that's $99 a person. But you need to have 20 people in. And there's a weekly conference call as well. And then we have an eight-week training program called Jumpstart Plus. And it's, eight, it's really an eight-week boot camp. It just, there has to be at least 20 people. It's one, a one-time fee of $495, and it's an eight-week boot camp. Matter of fact, when I wrote this program six years ago, I called it boot camp, but nobody joined it. <laughs> so I, I called them back, I said, I'm sending all the books back, make a new cover, it's now called Jumpstart. And now a thousand people a year take it. But just so you know, it's still, it's still the same boot camp material. So those are our coaching programs. And how do people join you? Pardon me? How do people join you? Oh, if you go to our website, which is robviviancoaching.com, robviviancoaching.com, but we're not hard to find. You can call the office, you can click on the, click on the tabs there, and check out our coaching programs. Does anybody have any 
Anybody have any questions? I want to do a Q and A for a few minutes. If anybody has a question? Does anybody have a question? Your business card. Your business card. Yeah, I actually, I forgot. Okay, don't worry. We will put the Rob Vivian's business card and coaching uh, program and website in our website to promote him, and uh, you can have access uh, through the website. It's really good to see you again. You gave me a. Hold on, one second. So, when did I meet you? About four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. Yeah. And you gave me a book to read called Ryan Ryan Rocks for Ryan, Success. Ryan. Right? It's one of the best books I've ever read. They don't make it, they don't print it anymore. No, 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 I bought Crack and Stakes. Yeah, they don't print that book anymore, but you gave me a book to read about four years ago. Yes? Um, you said the average of the sales that your uh, clients do is 50. Um, do you have a median number or maybe the lowest? Oh, the median is 47, 47. last year. The average was 46, the median was 47. Okay. Now, obviously, if people are brand new, but if you're brand new, if you're doing less than, say, 25, you do 25 with us, guaranteed. That's for sure. Because we can take any realtor and get them 100 leads and teach them how to process. So if you're new or not doing well, the first year 25. Also, is it a month to month basis or is it a year long commitment? The contracts are 90 days and month to month after that. Get over things quickly. And then have a, have a never give up life. Never give up. Uh, I think that's not just put this down. Anybody else have a question or are we all good? Hello, Anna. I don't know. Okay. But okay. Okay. So, you want to do more. So, uh, our next event, we did several events. You can come to the spring. Just like that, guys. We do several events that you can come to that are free. All of them 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 are free. We hold them at the International Plaza on 